Hi, I'm Tiam Singh. Welcome to another E3D Getting Started tutorial. We will be covering equipment modeling in this tutorial. Let's start by looking at the Model Explorer where we explore the elements in the Aviva E3D databases. Each of the nodes that you see on the Explorer is called an element and each element consists of attributes. Equipment needs to be modeled below a zone which is owned by a site. Each element in the database has got a name or a type. The zone is a type of element, the site is a type of element. Let's look at some attributes associated with a site. We can select the element and right click to select the attributes. Besides the name and functions and description of the site element, there are two attributes that is important in your work with E3D is the position and orientation. These two attributes will form a coordinate system for the site. The zone and the equipment also has got position and orientation attribute and when we model, we have to pay attention to these references. Let's look at some of the equipment that comes with the sample project and let me introduce the technique they use to model this equipment. One way of creating equipment is to create a piece of equipment D1201 for this case and it owns primitives which are dish, cylinder and it can also own sub-equipment which is a group of primitives to form certain parts of the equipment. For this case, we put the support into sub-equipment. The attributes of the primitive consist of attributes that define the geometry and position of the primitive. At the same time, it has two other attributes. One is the obstruction, which two means that it will be involved in an obstruction check. One for soft obstruction and zero no obstruction check. The lever is the representation of this primitive in drawings and 3D view. Let's look at the graphical settings. In the representation, we have set others to 6. So any primitives that has got levels which contain 6 will be shown in the graphical display. So you can see that when I change others to 9, that primitive because it's 0 to 8, it will not be shown in the graphical display. Using levels with the primitive, this allows the user to have different sort of display and different style of drawings from the 3D model. Instead of putting the representation at 6, I put it to 8. Besides seeing the normal equipment, we will see some of this heat exchanger with the service area right in front of it. Let's inspect these primitives. When I select the primitive, I have to use the navigation to go to the primitive itself. When we look at the cylinder, you can see the obstruction is 1 and the level is 8 to 10. Having an obstruction set to 1, when it has interference with another element, the system will be able to show that this is an obstruction between a soft volume and a hard volume or a soft volume and a soft volume. Let's reset the representation back to 6 so that we don't get this obstruction in the way of our 
போட்டதை Let's look at another piece of equipment. This equipment is created using a template. A template allows the equipment to be modified using parameters. The primitives in the template are related by using the rules. To modify this equipment, you have to change the properties of this equipment and not the individual attributes of the primitives. Besides using primitives or primitives with template, we can also group equipment with their structure together and we can put them together under a new user defined element type. For this case, we call this standard model item and you can see the actual type inside there as standard model item and the type is really a zone. Instead of using just equipment for any piece of equipment in our plant, we can differentiate the equipment using user-defined types. For this case, we have put together structures and equipment together under a user-defined type that is more like a module rather than a piece of equipment or piece of structure. Lastly, let's take a look at the equipment nozzle. Let's navigate to the primitives and the nozzle. You can see that the nozzle doesn't own primitives but is actually a standard component which the user can create and this is highlighted by the catalog reference that you can see in the attributes. E3D uses a lot of standard components and they are usually referenced by the spec ref or the cat ref. With some concept of the way, let's start our modeling of our first equipment. Let's start by creating a zone. Let's create our first equipment, which I'm going to create a tank. When we create the equipment, the positioning form will appear. This allows us to select any points in our 3D views for the position. Let's give our equipment a name called TK101. Let's use the cylinder for the body of the tank. Let's select the center of the cylinder. I use the shift M% to change the coordinates from relative to absolute. Let's put in 000 and let's define the diameter. We use enter once we select the diameter and now we can input the height which is 10 meter. So we have created our first primitive and let's use the cone for the roof of the tank. We can snap to the center of the cylinder that we created and then we specify the diameter by choosing the one of the points at the edge of the cylinder. Next, we give it a height. So we have now got the basic parts of the tank. So we can make more details by using more primitives. Next, I'll show you how to create nozzles for the tank. One on the roof at the top and one at the circumference of the body. First, let us create a sub-equipment to store our nozzle.
Let's use create nozzle to create our first nozzle. The first nozzle that we want to create is N2, but because names have to be unique in E3D, I've named it prefixed by the name of the equipment. Next, we will select the ball size and the type of nozzle. Next, I'm going to set the height for the nozzle. This value is usually the face of the nozzle to some reference line in the equipment. I set the height of this nozzle as 400. This nozzle protrudes from the top of the tank and this direction is the up direction. So I change the direction to up and I will position the nozzle, the base of the nozzle, which is 0.2, to the top of the tank. Next, I will then move it to the correct position along the top of the nozzle, which is 400 in the north direction. Now you can see the first nozzle that we have created. Next, I'm going to create a nozzle that is at the same position but a bit to the east of this nozzle. So I'll use the copy command and modify the nozzle. I change the name of the nozzle which is N1 and I also change the size or type if needed. This is 150 mm dominant size and I'll move it to the correct direction which is 400 to the east of the previous nozzle. So I've quickly created two nozzles very quickly. The next nozzle that I'm going to show you is one along the circumference of the tank. Let's give it a name and select the size of the nozzle which is 400 mm. The height of this nozzle from the face to the center of the tank is 2.2 meters. So I'll just key the height as 2200. By default, the nozzle is placed at 00, zero of the sub-equipment. The direction for this nozzle is west, which is correct, but let's move the nozzle to the correct position. You will notice that the nozzle has got three reference points, and I'm using point 2 as a reference. But when we place, the nozzle will be placed at 00, zero based on its standard datum point, which is the face of the nozzle. What you're seeing is that the face of the nozzle is at the center and the other end is protruding out of the tank. Let's modify the nozzle to get it in the correct position. Using P.2 as a reference, I lock at the north and the up position and select a new east position which is the center of the tank. Let's rotate our view now to the view from the south or north and let's move it, the nozzle to the correct height. Lastly, let's rotate the nozzle to the correct orientation. So we like to rotate the nozzle about the center of the vessel in the z-axis. So let's change the z-axis and the angle as 45 clockwise. Sorry, 45 anti-clockwise. We have seen how I use primitives to create equipment and how to include nozzles in my equipment. This should get you started on how to model equipment in E3D. See you again. Bye.